Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In the last video, we shot some different footage and got some pictures using our drone. And in this video, we're going to bring that footage and those files onto our computer and edit them and process them using free software. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, you could connect a USB cable. There's a port right here on this particular drone. We could just connect the cable and then transfer the files over. But what I'm gonna do is actually just pull out the micro XD card. So we just pull this card out right here. And then I have an adapter. Uh, they make a couple different uh, adapters. You could use, if you have a laptop or a computer that reads the full size SD cards, you could just put it in like this. So these go right in and then we can put this bigger card into our computer. Or you can get these um, on Amazon or all over the place, just a USB to SD or micro SD card adapter. And this takes both SD cards and micro SD cards so we just put it in right here and oops, get it in the correct way. So we'll just put this in and then we can put the USB into our computer and we can see and transfer those files. So let's do that now. We'll plug the USB port into the computer and we'll take a look at the files that we captured. With that card now put in the computer, we can open up a file explorer and here on Linux Mint, it's showing under devices. It's this 32 gigabyte volume. So I'll left click on this. Um, this will be similar if you're using Windows or Mac as well. We just need to go into this DCIM folder and go into these folders until we see our video and pictures. Now our pictures are going to be this .dng file, which is a raw file. That's the way I have mine set up right now. So it's not a PNG or a JPG, it's a DNG, which we need special software to open these. In fact, I'll just left click on one and we can look and see what this picture looks like. We can edit it um, and you know adjust the exposure and do all kinds of cool things. But actually, I'm not gonna do too much with the pictures right now. Instead, I'm going to do the video. So with the video, uh, Linux video players are pretty good. You'll be able to play just about any type of video. But if you're on Windows or Mac, you may need to install VLC player. So I already have VLC installed. This is just VLC media player. And what we can do with this is we can just drag and drop a video into VLC to start playing it. And I'll resize this video. So here's this video flying um, over the house and doing some different things. So we can look at this video. If we want to learn more about it, we can pause and we can go to tools and go to codec information. Again, this is a VLC option. And then it tells us all about this. We can see the video resolution. We can see the frame rate. Uh, we can see the codecs being used. So all kinds of good information here about this video file. Um, to edit this, we need to bring it into uh, our video editor. So sometimes I'll go through and watch some of the videos and just delete some of them before I, so I don't waste time bringing them into the video editor. But uh, let's start editing. We'll get into shortcut for this. You can use your video editor of choice, but if you want to follow along with this, uh, you may want to use shortcut. If you're not familiar with shortcut, it's a free and open source video editor. Runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it's what I'm currently doing all of my uh, YouTube videos in. So what we need to do is just click on this. Uh, playlist right up here if it's not down there for you or just click on the tab and then we go back to our folder and we just drag and drop those in the nice thing too if you're having a hard time seeing the thumbnail on Linux Mint you can go to the bottom right hand corner and resize these up so you can see a little more detail of what's happening and then sometimes I'll also you can go in here and sort them by date the date they were modified or created and also size so I'll know some of these ones are like look 4.1 gig Oh, and these are different dates, actually. I have some video footage here from a different time. So today's February 24th, so I'm gonna wanna do these ones like uh, maybe this, yeah, this four gig one from today. So I'll left click and just drag this one video file in. And then we see we have this video file. And we can either start playing over here and just press uh, the I key for to set our in point. And then we can press the O key on our keyboard to set the out point. And then we can drag and just drag only the, that short part of the clip to our timeline. And then we can go back into source and find a different part of the video clip. And then we can find, you know, we find a part we really like. Uh, where's the part we like? And we press the I key while it's playing. We let it play for a couple more seconds. And then we press the O key on our keyboard and then we drag that down. Um, one thing I want to show you with this, actually let's go back to source first. There's another cool thing we can get uh, of the cabin over here so we'll get a couple yeah we'll do the in point here we'll play we can even jump to our out point and then we'll do out point and drag this in 
So now we've got three uh, different video clips. I'll right click and go remove to remove this empty space. And so now our project video is going to look like this. And there's no audio because the drone didn't capture any audio. So we do the solar panels for a second, then we fly over the empty pond for a second, and then it goes to flying past uh, this part here. And maybe I want to end this right here, so I'll just click pause and I'll press O now. Or I could do split, I could do S on the keyboard to split this clip and then select the later one and hit the delete key on my keyboard. Uh, and again, we're going to rush over. I'm not really teaching the basics of Shotcut, um, but I do have tutorials teaching how to do that if you're interested. But uh, um, one interesting thing we want to do, so if we select a clip and go into properties, we can see that the resolution is uh, 2720 by 1530. But if we go to our um, settings video mode, we see our video project is a 1080p 60 frame per second video project which we probably should have actually changed that when we started to match the frame rate of the video, which is 23.97. I think we can do that now without getting into trouble. So let's change it to, um, I, I am going to downscale to 1080p, but we'll change it to this uh, 29.97. So now at least our video frame rate is going to match, um, the video we shot in is going to match our project frame rate. <clears throat> the only time sometimes I'll leave it at 60 frames per second, <clears throat> is if I'm increasing the speed of the video. So I'm speeding up the video so that it'll actually have 60 frames. But if your source video has 24 frames per second, there's no need to really speed it up to 60 frames. Let's play and make sure. Sometimes when you change this, it can mess things up, but it looks like everything looks pretty good here. Okay, cool. Um, now the next thing I wanna do is I may want to choose to crop, like this one right here. Um, I may wanna crop this in since I have a lot more uh, in my timeline, it's 1920 by 1080, but my source video is actually a 2720 by 1530. So a lot of times with this drone footage, if I'm working in 4K or something larger than 1080, what I'll do is go into filters and I'll add a uh, source crop. So I'll search for crop and go to crop source. And what this lets me do is I can come over here and I can crop this down. Uh, I can crop over on the right hand side and I can crop some off the bottom. And so that's essentially, it's kind of like zoom in a way. We're zooming in here, but we're not losing any detail because we already had more detail to start with. Does that make sense? So this is what our video will look like now. It's, it's zoomed in more to this one area. And if we uncheck this and see without it, so we're getting a little bit, we're seeing more detail in this video. Uh, so this crop source in Shotcut is kind of a way of achieving more uh, video uh, resolution. Okay, cool. So we'll do that with just this one. We'll leave the other ones how they are, but this one we'll get a little bit uh, more into there. And then maybe for fun, we'll just left click and drag and overlap a little bit to get some different uh, transitions, some different fades, fading from one to the other. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just record if I want to add some audio in here, which I do, I'm just going to bring up audacity. And in Audacity, I'm just going to very quickly record uh, a voiceover. It's something I do all the time. Um, so I'll, I'll get a project in Shotcut that needs a voiceover, and then I'll bring over Audacity. And what I'll do is I'll hit record on Audacity. So I'm recording right now, you can see my voice. And then I'll move this out of the frame, and then I'll go to the beginning of my video project, and I'll hit play, and I'll just say what I wanna say on top of this video. Hey guys, check this out. Here are some solar panels that we can look at. And there's also an empty pond here covered in snow in the winter time. But wait, there's also a little tiny cabin with solar panels on it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. All right, so this is all done now. Oops. And now I'm going to go over, and I'm still recording in Audacity, so I'll hit the pause button. And then I'll go File, uh, Export, Export Wave. And I'll just call this, um, we'll just call it test.wave. I'll put it on the desktop, and I'll save that. So now this is on the desktop and I can actually see it right down here. I can left click and drag it. So I'm going to uh, go to my playlist and I'll drag this audio file in. And then I'm going to resize this a little bit so I can see I'll right click here and go add audio track and I'll drag this down. And I just need to find the start of this. So let me go back and I'll play this. So I'm recording right now, you can see my voice. And I'm gonna come to the part. Hey guys. Uh, where it starts. So right here is where it starts where I'm saying, hey guys, and I'm going to go in and then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go out. Maybe I'll bring this right here 
and then I'll go out. And here we go. So now I have my whole video with audio. So I can come back and I can play this. Hey guys, check this out. Here are some solar panels that we can look at. And there's also an empty And I can see my audio level over here. Sometimes I'll click on this and I'll go into filters and I'll go to add and I'll go to volume and add volume and gain to this track. I could do the whole audio track as well. And I can raise this level up to maybe like by like five or seven decibels or something, maybe 10 and get it to the point where it's a little bit higher over here. So as I adjust this, notice on the right hand side, this level is changing. So I don't want it to be like peaking out too high. But wait, there's also a little tiny cabin. There we go. And so that's pretty good volume, I think. And then the last thing I need to do is just go click on this export tab and I can scroll down and say, I want to export this and share it to YouTube. And I can just click export file. It brings up a dialogue and asks me where I want to save this. So I'll save it to desktop and I'll just call it test. And it knows that the format is .mp4 already because I have that set uh, over here by where I selected. And then it starts exporting and we see the job is right over here. So it's exporting under these jobs. Um, it's 31, 33% done exporting. So this will export very quickly since it's only a 15 second video. And then when it's done, we'll have a .mp4 video on the desktop that we can play on our computer, we can put on any device we want, and we can also upload it to um, video services like YouTube. We can upload it and share it on the internet. So uh, I'll move this out of the way and we'll take a look and see where that file is. Here it is right here on the desktop, test.mp4. If we play it, it will open up our video. Hey guys, check this out. Here are some solar panels that we can And it at. plays the audio as well, just the way we edited it. The oh, well, there's something else we could have done too. So sometimes with this drone footage, um, I should have done this, um, like this one right here, we can add another filter. We can go in and, yeah, well, there's no filters yet. Um, we can add in something like we can do color grading or, or brightness maybe more um, in this case. We can turn, we can make it more or less bright. It's a little bit, this drone shoots a little bit dark or I, I maybe had it configured to be a little bit darker. So I could adjust the brightness if I wanted to. And you could even come in and do some like uh, contrast and color grading. So we can do contrast to bring out if we want. If something's kind of blown out like this, we can turn the contrast down. Um, so if you're familiar with adjusting brightness and contrast and working with color, um, then you'll that's something good too. You can also do in Shotcut. We can give it different hues, kind of change the colors in here, make it look colder or warmer than it really was, than the colors really were. Um, yeah, I hope this has been informative. I don't know. I had this idea to make this video for you guys, and uh, so hopefully it's been informative. Leave your questions and comments below. I mean, what I would do next is to share this, I guess just to carry this out completely, is we can go to YouTube and on my channel, this is what I do quite often, I'll just click here, this upload. When I'm logged in, I'll click this upload button here and go to upload video, and then I'll just drag and drop this video that we made onto here, and all of a sudden, we're sharing a video on YouTube, and there's more information. Um, it'll ask for like the title and the different tags and the description of the video when we do that. But since I'm not really sharing that video, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to actually make a, a, a tour video probably out of this and maybe share it on this channel. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, hopefully this has been informative for you and kind of showing you an option for editing and working with uh, drone footage in, uh, in using open source software like Audacity and Shotcut. And then there's also Darktable too. We didn't touch much on that, but there is Darktable that we can edit the, those pictures with as well. And maybe I'll do that uh, in a future video also. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Leave your questions in the comments below if you have any. And I'll catch you in the next video.